Elon Musk donates $75 million to help Trump campaign. Elon Musk has donated $75 million to a campaign group he set up to support Donald Trump's presidential bid. The donation to America PAC, which was made in several payments over the summer, has been revealed in new campaign finance disclosures. Around $72 million of the $75 million has already been spent by the group on canvassing efforts to encourage people to vote. America PAC has been hit by problems with hiring campaigners in recent months, having fired two major contractors since July who were tasked with knocking on front doors. Following the disclosure, Musk wrote on social media that America PAC was just aiming for common sense, centrist values. The billionaire previously supported the Democrats but has become a vocal backer of Mr. Trump in recent months. He has vowed to help with campaign efforts and joined the Republican candidate on stage at a campaign rally earlier this month in Pennsylvania. At the event, Musk, who runs Tesla and SpaceX, jumped around on the stage and described next month's presidential election as a must-win situation during brief remarks to the crowd. Mr. Trump has welcomed Musk's support and described him as someone who is as smart as you get. There has been intense speculation over Musk's contributions to the Trump campaign after the Republican presidential candidate claimed in July that Musk gave him $45 million a month. The billionaire disputed the figure and later tweeted his donations were at a much lower level. Musk is currently the world's richest man, with an estimated net worth of $248 billion, according to Forbes. America PAC is one of several major political action committees in the U.S. Such groups can raise and spend unlimited amounts of money in support of political candidates on the condition that they do not coordinate with their campaigns or give money to them. America PAC has declined to comment on the donations. Man faces five years in prison after dog tied to fence in Hurricane Milton. A man has been charged with aggravated animal cruelty after footage of a dog that was abandoned ahead of Hurricane Milton was shared widely online. Giovanni Aldama Garcia, 23 years old, from Ruskin in Hillsborough County, Florida, is facing up to five years in prison after the male bull terrier was rescued by highway patrol troopers on Interstate 75 in Tampa on October 9. Florida Highway Patrol FHP, shared a video showing the dog up to its chest in water and tied to a fence as people began evacuating the state hours before Milton made landfall. The animal appeared shaken and started barking as it was approached by an FHP trooper. 13th Circuit State Attorney Susie Lopez, who is pursuing the charges against Garcia, has said the bull terrier was facing sure death when it was found. Highway Patrol officers took the animal to a vet after the rescue where it was found to be healthy. The dog, which has since been named Trooper, is now safe and will not be returned to Garcia, the Florida State Attorney's Office said in a statement. It added that the 23-year-old former owner, who fled Florida ahead of the hurricane, told investigators he abandoned the pet on his way to Georgia because he couldn't find anyone to pick the dog up. He later went to the Hillsborough County Animal Shelter on Friday looking to claim the dog. Garcia said that if the dog's new owner would take care of it and love it, he would give up ownership. Ms. Lopez said, in Hillsborough County, we take animal cruelty very seriously. This defendant is charged with a felony and could face up to five years in prison for his actions. Ms. Lopez added that she doesn't think five years in prison is enough time and hopes politicians take a look at this case and discuss changing the law to allow for harsher penalties for people who abandon their animals during a state of emergency. Garcia was released after paying bail money loaned by a bond company, according to Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office inmate records. Dave Kerner, executive director of the Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles Department, has said the investigation into the case is active and ongoing. <laughs> Family members of Menendez brothers unite to call for their release. 
Relatives of Lyle and Eric Menendez have come together to call for the pair's release from prison. Up to two dozen extended family members gathered for a news conference in Los Angeles, which was organized after prosecutors announced they were reviewing new evidence in their case. Eric Menendez, now 53 years old, and Lyle Menendez, 56 years old, are currently serving life sentences without the possibility of parole after being convicted of murdering their parents at their mansion in Beverly Hills more than 35 years ago. The killings have been in the spotlight in recent weeks following the release of Monsters, a Netflix dramatization of their story, as well as a documentary. In August 1989, the brothers shot their parents, Jose and Kitty Menendez, multiple times at close range. They were aged 18 years old and 21 years old at the time. They admitted the shootings but maintained they killed their mother and father in self-defense after enduring physical, emotional and sexual abuse over many years. Speaking at the news conference, Jose Menendez's niece Ana Maria Baralt announced that relatives had formed a new coalition called Justice for Eric and Lyle. She told reporters, both sides of the family are united, sharing a new bond of hope. This is about truth, justice, and healing. Their continued incarceration serves no rehabilitative purpose. Ms. Baralt said the brothers were victims of a culture that was not ready to listen, as she called on the district attorney's office to take into account the full picture. The news conference was the largest gathering of the extended family since the brothers were found guilty of first-degree murder and conspiracy to murder in 1996, seven years after the killings and following a second trial. However, their lawyers argue that because of society's changing views on sexual abuse, the outcome of a trial today might be different. Prosecutors had argued there was no evidence of any molestation and said the murders were committed so the brothers could inherit their parents' multi-million dollar estate. New evidence includes a letter written by Eric Menendez that his lawyers say corroborates allegations he was sexually abused by his father. A hearing is scheduled for November 29th. <coughs> Counter-terror police investigate whether Russia was involved in suspicious package fire. Counter-terror police are investigating whether Russia had any involvement after a suspicious package caught fire at a DHL warehouse in the West Midlands. A police spokesperson confirmed that a package at the location caught a light and it was dealt with by staff and the local fire brigade at the time. They added, due to the circumstances and the specialist capability and expertise in investigating such matters, the investigation is being led by officers from the Mets Counterterrorism Command with support from colleagues from Counterterrorism Policing West Midlands. As part of our inquiries, officers are liaising with other European law enforcement partners to identify whether this may or may not be connected to any other similar type incidents across Europe. No one was injured and the blaze was extinguished by the local fire brigade during the incident in Minworth, Birmingham, on July 22, officers said. The part of the police's investigation is whether Russia had any involvement in the incident. It comes as authorities in Germany investigate several fires thought to have been caused by incendiary devices hidden inside parcels at a warehouse in Leipzig earlier this year. Officials warned businesses in August that dangerous parcels might be in circulation. On Monday, Thomas Haldenwang, the head of Germany's domestic intelligence agency, told a parliamentary committee that a plane crash had only narrowly been averted when an air freight parcel caught fire. The Prosecutor General's office in the country declined to comment on a possible link to Russia. A spokesperson for DHL said, DHL Express Europe is taking risk mitigation actions to secure its network, staff and assets as well as customer shipments by implementing strengthened security measures across the European countries as a reaction to ongoing investigations by authorities from several countries. Wine gang busted after selling fake vintage for $16,230 a bottle. 
Police say they have broken up a criminal wine gang that sold cheap plunk for $16,230 a bottle by passing it off as a French vintage. The group is accused of counterfeiting bottles of Grand Cru in Italy and then distributing them for sale among honest wine traders around the world. Police said they had seized a large amount of counterfeit bottles, stickers, and wax products following raids at more than a dozen locations in Turin, Milan, and Paris. Detectives also discovered technical machines to recap bottles, computers, phones and luxury watches valued at $1.4 million. A total of more than $109,000 in cash was also seized from properties across Italy and France. Seven people have been arrested. The alleged gang is estimated to have made more than $2.2 million profit from the fraud, according to officials. It comes following a probe led by French police, alongside forces in Italy and Switzerland, with support from cross-continent law enforcement agencies Europol and Eurojust. A spokesperson for Eurojust said, by working with printing houses in Italy, the criminal group was able to recreate the corks and labels of famous French wineries. The forged wine was then delivered to an Italian airport and taken abroad to be sold at market value around the world by wine traders. During the probe, officials established a link with a previous counterfeit wine investigation, which was closed in 2015 following the arrest of a Russian national. The authorities said new counterfeits began to appear in 2019, specifically in the Swiss and Italian markets, in bottles fitted with copies of new security features. The discovery of the fakes allowed police to trace the wines via distribution routes back to their source, officials said. It is feared that some customers who bought the fake wine may have put their bottles in storage as an investment or to drink years later, meaning they may never find out their purchase was counterfeit. Counterfeit wines have long been a problem in the industry. One of the most notorious cases is that of Rudy Kurniawan, who was found guilty in 2013 of manufacturing fake vintage wine in his kitchen and selling it to collectors to fund his lavish lifestyle. The Californian was sentenced to 10 years in prison after a court heard he sold as much as $1.3 million worth of counterfeit bottles to unwitting buyers. Kearney Alwan, who inspired the 2016 documentary Sour Grapes, has since been released. Iran, Russia and North Korea changed cyber attack tactics in the last year. Microsoft users face more than 600 million cyber attacks every day, partly fueled by a growing trend of cyber crime gangs working with nation states, according to a new report by the company. In this year's digital defense report, Microsoft said countries like Russia, Iran and North Korea have changed how they worked in the last year, including starting to experiment with AI. We must find a way to stem the tide of this malicious cyber activity. That includes continuing to harden our digital domains to protect our networks, data, and people at all levels, said Tom Burt, the company's vice president of customer security and trust. Russia appears to have outsourced some of its cyber espionage to criminal gangs, especially around its spying in Ukraine, and in June, a suspected cyber crime group managed to compromise at least 50 Ukrainian military devices. In North Korea, a new piece of ransomware tech was developed called Fake Penny, which Microsoft says the country used against defense and aerospace organizations. Iran placed significant focus on Israel and is accused of hacking Israeli dating sites. Cyber criminals working for the country then allegedly offered to remove specific users from their hacked databases for a fee. The number of ransomware attacks around the world more than doubled in the last year, according to the report, with hackers tending to use email, SMS and voice scams to try and access users' information. The use of artificial intelligence in cyber attacks also increased in the last year, with criminals linked to Russia and China using AI-generated content to try and trick users. However, so far, we have not observed this content being effective in swaying audiences, said Mr. Burt.